from leaning not on our own understanding to casting down wicked imaginations. We're here to study to show ourselves approved here a little and there a little. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Stick to the Script. Let's read the Bible now. Grace and peace, brothers and sisters. Greeting and welcome to another edition of Stick to the Script Bible Talk Show, where we teach from a biblical perspective, excuse me, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Please subscribe to the page, like, share, or whatever have you. Uh, This is an Israel of God production coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona. Get you something to jot the scriptures down because we move rather rapidly through the scriptures. We are Christian Israelites who keep the faith in Jesus Christ and also keep his commandments. So what we're going to do right now, brothers and sisters, is join the panel, my co-workers in the vineyard. So hello, hello. we got here all the way from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, where I am locally, yeah. <laughs> one of the elders, Brother Jedediah. How you doing, Hebrew? How you doing, Israel? Blessed, brother. Blessed to be here as always. It's a blessing to uh, see all the brothers and us coming together, man. So in Jesus' name, I thank you for uh, allowing me to be here. Praise, praise, praise the Lord in Jesus' name. By his grace, you know, we are able to uh, get in the vineyard and work. So from all the way from the UK, the United Kingdom, IOG, we got brother Mark Azaria. How you doing, Israel? How you doing, fam? Hey, Israel. Good afternoon from a sunny United Kingdom. Great to see you, brothers. Always excites me to come and talk about the scriptures uh, and be edified. And uh, also, it is just wonderful that you guys have invited me back. And I really look forward to the show. Great to see you all. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name, likewise, my brother. So we got from the Detroit area, Detroit ILG, we got brother Michael Pippen. How you doing, Israel? How you doing, my brother? Grace and peace, family. Doing all right humbled and thankful to be allowed to be on here to help spread the word in the ring yard. Amen. Yes, sir. So, so Mike, Michael Pippen is, is going to be reading for us the dynamic word of God, the word of truth, the word of power. So our subject and our title today, brothers and sisters, is called the Godhead, the Godhead. And we're going to give you the information that's necessary for you to get understanding out of the scripture so you won't second guess it or make no mistake about it. So I'm going to start the first leg off, and where we're going to start this out at is in Genesis, the first chapter. We go on to Genesis, the first chapter, and let us see what the book have to say about this subject and title. Read verse one for me, Brother Mike. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, let's see who was included in this God family. John the first chapter, my brother. John the first chapter, so we won't make no mistake about it. And read verses one through two. Go ahead and read. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. That's right. So we see it's two individuals here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the word was God. That's two individuals. So in the, in the beginning, when it, in Genesis, when it said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, we see two individuals right here, my brother. Read verse 14, because we're going to see one came in the flesh and in the likeness of men. Go ahead and read. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And we know this to be Jesus Christ. And we're going to show you and reiterate that he was indeed back in the beginning when God created the heaven and the earth, which entails him and his father. Verse 3, read that, my brother. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That's right. 
So when it says, God said, let us make man in our image and after our own likeness, that entails more than one, more than one. And one none made without this individual, which we know is to be Jesus the Christ, who came in his father name, which entails the whole composition of the Godhead. Let's go to First Timothy, the third chapter, to tell you without dispute. People don't understand great is the mystery of godliness. Go ahead and read that. Verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. God was manifested in the flesh, and that was Jesus Christ. John 1 and 10, my brother, read that. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So that validates his sisters and brothers, that he was indeed God in the beginning that created the heaven and the earth, but he came in the flesh, and the world knew him when he came into the world, though he created the world. Hebrews 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1 and read to 3, my brother. Read that for me. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being, in the, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purge our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That's right. See, the Father just didn't create the earth. He said created the worlds by his Son. You see what I'm saying? And by him, our sins are purged by the blood that he shed to recover the creation, to be a ransom for the Father to redeem the world. Colossians 1 and 14, and go ahead and read to 17, my brother, to validate this. Amen. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and in invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. That's right. He created everything. This was the individual that was known as the word in John, the first chapter, that was with God and that was God, which identified two as being in the Godhead. Colossians 2 and 9, because we're going to show you that he completes the Godhead with the Father. Go ahead and read Colossians 2 and 9, my brother. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's right. He completes the body of the Godhead along with the Father. And let's go to Revelation 19 to show you and validate that this is indeed Jesus Christ, the Word of God, making a second coming in Revelation 19. Pick it up at 12 and read the 13 for me, my brother. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. That was with God in the beginning, and that was God. Philippians, the second chapter. So when he came in the flesh, he gave up that reputation of being God. But before he came in the flesh, he was equal with God, and he thought it not robbery to declare himself as being equal with God. Philippians 2, and pick it up at 6 and read the 8, my brother. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. 
That's right, because he was the ultimate sacrifice to recover the world because the bloods of bulls and goats could not take away sin. And we're going to show you that in Hebrews 10 and 5. We're going to get some great information out of this one scripture. Verse 5, read that for me, my brother, when he came in the world. Wherefore, when he, came, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. That's right, to be the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the world. Seeing he was God, he had to be prepared a flesh and blood body to be able to die for the sins of the world. And David spoke about these things. But when he died, he wasn't going to stay in the grave like all other men. He was promised to raise the third night and go back to the Father to take away the sins. Pick it up at Acts 2 and 25 and read to 27, my brother. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. That's right. He's not going to decompose. Skip down to verse 30 and read to verse uh, 33, my brother. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with sworn with an oath to him that of the first uh, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath, he hath shed forth this, which we now see and hear. That's right. Peter then was witness to all this. And when he came up out of that grave, he was given the glory that he had before the world was. And that's what he petitioned the Father about before his death. Go ahead and read uh, John 17 and 5. John 17 and 5. Or rather, after he got his work done. Go ahead and read. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. That's right. So glorify me with the glory that I had with thee before the world was as being God with you in the Godhead. Philippians 2 and 9, and we're going to see the Father did highly exalt him, and the book going to validate it. Go ahead and read 9 and 10. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Yes, sir. Uh, every knee shall bow to Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. That's why he said, glorify me with thine own self, with the glory that I had before the world was, as being God. And Psalms 45 and 6 and 7 is going to explain that. Read that, my brother. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Highly exalted him, like we read in Philippians. But let's go to Hebrews, the first chapter, and see who is this that's being called God. And pick it up at the eighth verse, and we're going to skip. Let's see if it was an angel or if it was the Son of God, Jesus himself, who was blessed forever. Go ahead and read. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So and he thou, called Lord, Jesus God. He's called Jesus God. Skip down to verse 10 and read that. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Go validating it again, that he was there in the beginning to 
create the heaven and earth. Isaiah, the 57th chapter, let Isaiah validate this thing that is only two, and they dwell in eternity, and they are most holy. Go ahead and read, brother. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to so revive the, the one spirit. Well. Go ahead, brother. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So he the one dwell with the Father in eternity. First Timothy 6 and 16 to show you and validate that point as well with the New Testament to testify. Read verse 16 and then we're going to skip. Amen. Who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. That's why he's the first begotten of the dead, who only have immortality. Verse 15, go ahead and read. Which is his times, which is his times he shall show, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we know that to be Jesus Christ, the one that had many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. And his name was called the word of God which is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. John 17 and 3, my brother, because we're going to show you that this is eternal life to know the, the individuals that compose the Godhead. Go ahead and read, which are two. Go ahead and read, brother. John 17 and 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the one, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And this is eternal life. Take heed to this, brothers and sisters, that you may know the only true God, which is the Father, the invisible God that ain't nobody ever seen, and the first and the last, which is Jesus the Christ, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy One of Israel. And take heed that you teach this to the flock that the Lord made you overseers of. And we're going to see one thing in this scripture right here that's going to point it all out to validate that Jesus is, is God and his father is God as well. Acts 20 and 28. When you get it, go ahead and read that, my brother. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Yes, sir. Take heed to yourself to feed the church of God the right thing concerning his Godhead, concerning his laws and his statutes that he purchased with his own blood. When have you ever known the Father, which is also known as God, to come down and die for the sins of man and purchase and recover the world with his own blood? It's not written in the book, but Jesus, the one that created the world, he was the one that came down and purchased the world with his own blood, that whosoever will, let him come and take hold of salvation. And I'm going to reiterate that again. Take heed, therefore, unto yourself, to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers, sisters and brothers, and feed the church of God, which he, God, purchased with his own blood. And that's the guy ahead. And I turn it back over to the panel, to my brother. Hope somebody was edified. Amen, amen, and amen, brother. You you pointed out, you know, uh, there shouldn't be any mistake as to who the Godhead is, you know. And the thing is, man, there's a lot of people out here that, that just go contrary to even the scriptures, man. Uh, there's so much false doctrine out here. You know, Satan doesn't miss a stroke, man, when trying to run interference on the word of God. And as you pointed out in John uh, 1 and 10, you know, he was in the world and the world knew him not. This is a problem, man, about, um, you know, people actually, you know, consuming the word of God and understanding who the Lord, who the Lord truly is because their minds have been blinded. But you made it so clear, but it does say in uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 2, that, you know, how uh, these people that that miss, uh, uh, that's construed the words all up, 
you know, you know, they be speaking lies. And in uh, Timothy, First Timothy four and two, it says, having their conscience seared with hot iron. And it's also written in Second uh, Timothy four and three, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, because after they be after their own lust, and they shall heap themselves teachers having itching ears. They can't hear the truth. All this truth that you just just gave us is set out there about the Lord, about the Father, the Son, um, the Godhead. It says that they are heaping teachers, you know, to themselves. And this means that this, they only want to hear and be taught, you know, what they're accustomed to. And this is why these people are, are lost. But you just set it out as to who the really true and living God is and who the Father is and who the what the Godhead is. So I thank you for that, brother. And I turn it back over to the panel. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, Amen. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to first uh, uh, congratulate my brother Mike Pippins on fine reading and bro Alvin for breaking down them scriptures so beautifully. I have to approach this with total humility. I used to uh, be one of those ministers who um, taught contrary to the word of God because simply I didn't know no better is what I was taught. I was told that God, this God thing is a mystery and nobody fully understand it. And that I had some uh, spirit being that comes and lives inside of me who is called the Holy Ghost. But I thank God that he has reserved in every generation his able ministers who don't stand there and talk God and cherry pick certain scriptures out, uh, out the Bible and then build up a sermon on it but that the Lord has raised up able ministers who can uh, compare spiritual things with spiritual things and who teach this word the way it's supposed to be taught. Line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. If I had never known anything about God or the Godhead concerning uh, the Bible, which we have, then today I would know for certain because my brother, I can say that both with the reader and teacher, you broke it down beautifully. And I, as say someone would have been outside, would have been able to see very clearly that the word was made flesh and that this word is Jesus Christ, who was one with the father from the beginning. And I thank you so much for the clarification, and I hand it back to the panel. Praise the Lord, my brother. Amen, amen, and amen. I'm going to uh, proceed and and uh, from here, brothers, the Godhead. And I know, you know, we're all using, going to be using the same scriptures because it's the foundation of, of, of uh, establishing the Godhead. And we're going to start right now with uh genesis one and read my brother uh brother mike one and two for me please Amen. in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth and the earth was, was and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters now first it says in the beginning god as translated from the hebrew text the word Elohim, uh, defined as an Elohim, is defined as a, a unit having uh, one or more participant participants. Elohim is a uniplural word. I mean, just as uh, family or team, they're both uniplural words. But then in verse two, it says, "And the spirit of God moved upon the water of the earth." Um, someone would have you to believe. Some people would have you to believe that the spirit of God is an entity that functions on its own. But to the contrary, it's the Elohim, it's God's ministering spirits, it's the angels, it's the servants of God. And as it says uh, also, and it brings the light in Isaiah 63 and nine, that it speaks about the angel of his presence. And it also declares in Hebrews 
uh, and I know we hit this before. Uh, Brother Al hit it. Alvin hit it. Hebrews 1, and hit, let's hit uh, 13 and 14 for me, brother. Amen. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? They are all ministering spirits. And as the Lord um, had, to, had to do, and all he had to do was just speak, you know, uh, whenever uh, Elohim spoke, it would come into fruition. His ministering spirits would bring it to pass. I want you to read what, uh, what I've write, written down there for Genesis 1 and 3. Read that for me, brother. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now let's skip to uh, verse 6 and read just what I've, I've written down there, brother, for me, please. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Okay, now let's skip to verse 9. Read that for me, please. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Whatever God said came to light. And God, our Elohim, makes it abundantly clear that he's not alone or it's not just a individual entity uh, uh, that does this. As uh, what he said as well in verse, and makes clear in verse uh, 26, Genesis 1 and 26. Read that, brother. And God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. He said, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. This is obviously, obviously establishes that the Lord is not alone, which is further established in John 1 and 1. Uh, read 1 and 2, John uh, 1, 1 verses 1 and 2 for me, brother. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The Word is Jesus. And him being the Word and was with God, that defines the Godhead, the Elohim. This is is continually made clear throughout the whole book. But let's go to John 10 and read 27 through 30 for me, brother. And, and it makes it even more clear. Read that for me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. The Lord says that he and the father are one, not two, not three, not four. They are Elohim. They are God, as defined as a unit, having more than one participant. Also, he says in John 5, whose name that the Lord comes in. Read John 5. And 43 for me, brother. Amen. I am come in my father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Now, this is what Jesus has said. So, what does it say about this name Jesus? Okay, let's read that in Philippians 2 and read 9 through 11 for me, brother. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and, at the, and, that, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is Lord, and to the glory of the Father. Now, this whole time, scriptures is, is spoken of no one else but the Father and Son. No other entities besides, you know, the, the ministering spirits, i.e. I angels, but 
This is semen. It's also in Proverbs 30 and 4. Would you please read that for me, brother? Who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered, gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. I have yet to see where there's a third entity that comes into play, you know, as a God, which is referred to uh, by Christendom as, you know, God, the Holy Spirit. This phrase isn't found anywhere in the 66 books of the Bible. But I'll tell you what the Godhead is not. It is not as it's defined by Christendom. Would you put up this PDF for me, brother? And brother, brother Mike, would you read that PDF for me? Where is this Refers Mike? Refers to the. Okay, there we go. Go ahead, brother. Start over again, would you please? Godhead or Godhood refers to the essence or substance of the Christian God, especially as an. Ex especially as existing in three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is not that, that's for sure. There's nowhere it says that all three are gods. However, it does say in John 5, who the Father witnesses to. Read John 5, 5 through 11 for me, brother, please. Amen. Who is he that overcometh the world? but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God, that this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is true. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his son. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not, God hath, God hath made him a liar because he believed not the record the, that God gave of his son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is his own, is his son, is in his son, excuse me. And this life is in his son, right? He says, and the Holy Spirit, uh, the spirit is the witness that this is the spirit of truth. He speaks the truth. You see here, it says that like also in uh, verse seven, for the word and uh, the Holy Spirit, they bear record as one witness. The record is that Jesus is the son of God. And even though man has a witness, God has a greater witness because he testifies of his son. Now let's go back to Hebrews uh, one and let's read uh, seven and eight for me, brother. Please do that. And of the angels, he saith who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is, is the scepter of thy kingdom. The Father says unto the Son, Thy throne, O God. The Father refers to the Son as a God, but he doesn't refer, uh, uh, or I don't hear him testifying of the Holy Ghost, none other than him being a ministering spirit. But here's uh, Christendom's best explanation of why they believe such a thing, which is completely unscripted. Rasan, would you put up that next PDF for me, please? Okay, all right. This says that God is not the Son, but he is a God. And he is not the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is also a God. And that the Son 
is not the Holy Spirit nor the Father, but is a God, which completely contradicts what's written in John 30, uh, 10 and 30. I am, I and my Father are one. They believe that there are three gods in the Godhead, when plainly it says uh, differently in Colossians 2 and 9. And brother, would you pick that up and read Colossians 2 and 9 for me? For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All scriptures um, really finalizes, other fifth scriptures really finalizes this in Romans uh, 1, 19 through 21, and then explains really why the hearts of these people are so misled. Would, that, would you read that for me, brother? Romans 1, Amen. 19 through 21. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. It says that from the creation, you know, uh, we should have known, they should have known, when you understand who the Lord is, and it says that he is the God, uh, uh, the God, part of the Godhead, and this should be without excuse. You should know these things. But they haven't the understanding because their, their hearts are darkened. And they don't have this understanding, and, and it's required for them to see the truth and the light of the Father, the Godhead, you know, the Elohim of our lives, the, uh, the Redeemer of our souls, and they just cannot grasp it uh and you know is and i pray that they really repent because it says in proverbs 4 and 7 i mean with all you're getting get some understanding and they seem to be missing uh the understanding that is needed to acquire the salvation of the lord and i thank you uh, for allowing me to uh, speak and i turn it back over to the panel Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Brother Jedediah. Thank you so, so much uh, for the breakdown uh, from going straight off, uh, explaining this word God, which we have in English, to show that it comes from the root word Elohim, which is a plural unity. And um, also for showing that angels are ministering spirits and the ones who um didn't rebel and follow satan are all holy so we get into this whole thing where we got to know when we use the word spirit what we're talking about so it's wonderful how uh, how you broke that down i love that you pointed out where jesus also said i and my father are one and the people who we were talking to at that time understood what he meant that he was saying he was equal with the father and they took up stones one into stone him but he yeah. had told them the truth he told them the truth they just yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. get they, they get it to grasp it i uh, love that you pointed out also to in philippians 2 the name of jesus this name which is above every name to which every knee is gonna bow jesus makes it plain that he came in his father's name and a yes, lot of sir. people to this day don't understand from the word of god that the one who is jehovah or yahweh as they call him in the old testament or first covenant is the one who came in his father's name Amen. in the second covenant the Amen. name jesus christ it's wonderful that you, uh, you pointed that out um also the three that bear witness and we know because revelation one and one tells us clearly who those witnesses are the father uh, gives the command to Jesus, his son. Jesus, in turn, gives it to the angel. And we can read that. Who are ministering spirit. And they get down here, give the word to Israel. Israel gives it to the rest of the nations. That's yes, always been the protocol of God. That's how he works. Amen. Um, and I'm um, glad, too, that you went to moments to point out that, you know, 
people have been misled and we've all been misled. I can't speak for you brothers, but I know for 40 years I was steeped in false doctrine. I didn't know no better. It's simply what I was yes. taught. So what you're saying there is the blessed hope that as we get the word, the uncut word of God and let it speak for itself, that people will be edified, the scales will come off their eyes and they will yes, come sir. to know the living and true God and serve him. And with that, amen. I hand back to the panel. Amen, amen. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. It's a very edifying topic. And, uh, you know, people, you know, they got their own ideology and it's sad, you know, because they don't want to take the word of God, you know, for what it's saying and, and accept that, you know, all this traditional teaching, which brought forth falsehood. Satan has deceived yes, the whole world with this bad doctrine out here, yes, even that Trinity doctrine, you know, uh, like in Romans, the 10th chapter, Paul here says something about Israel. And this goes for the world, too, because if Israel go bad, the world then they are the priests. He say, for they being ignorant of godliness and going to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. That's why they can't receive, like when you pointed yes, out, our brother uh, Jedediah, Genesis, uh, the first chapter, when God said, let us, let us make man in our image. You know what I'm saying? They want to add three individuals in there as opposed to dealing with the two that's in there that you showed in John, the first chapter. In the beginning yes, was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. You can't get three out of that. You can only no. get two. You that's see right. what I'm saying? Yes, Even sir. when you go uh, look at the pro protocol from God to man in the book of Corinthians, when he say, man is the head of the woman and Christ is the head of the man. And the head of Christ is God. Now, if this third entity was somewhere to be found, why he ain't included <laughs> right. in that list? You see what I'm Sir. saying? He should at least be Sir. between uh, Christ and man or between God the Father and Christ. He is not included because right. there's only two. That's why man and woman is the epitome of the Godhead. Them two be joined together and become one. So I hope People was edified with the information that yes, you are sir. putting forth and that the rest of these brothers is going to continue to put forth. And I turn it back over to the panel. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, uh, bro, Mike, let's hit the road running. We're going to go straight into it. 1 Thessalonians 1 on 1. Please read. Amen. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God, the Father, and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, straight into Philemon, and we're going to read, matter of fact, just read verse 3. Just read verse 3. Grace, Go ahead. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let's hit 1 Peter 1 and read verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We keep seeing this repetition of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to John 1 and you're going to read verse 1 and 2. Okay, please read. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the okay. beginning with God. Yes, sir. The same was in the beginning with God. If that's the case, let us go back to the beginning. Put your marker here, and we're going to go to Genesis 1, and we're going to read verse 1, and then skip to 26. But read verse 1 and stop. Go ahead. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yes, sir. This word God, as Bro Jedediah pointed out, is a uniplural word. And it comes, uh, uh, um, come, we got it in English, but it comes from the Hebrew Elohim. Elo is singular, Elohim is plural. And we laid the foundation and show, show that, we, that we keep seeing God the Father and Jesus Christ. Skip to verse 26 and read. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness 
and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God said, let us. So we see the plurality being brought out. And so far we are seeing two in this garden. Let's go to John 4 and read verse 24. Go ahead, sir. God, is a, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is a spirit. That means he's not a flesh and blood being like we are. I am a man and so are my children. So if God has a son, what is he? Let us find out from the word of God. Go to Hebrews 1 and read 1 to 9, my brother. Please read. God, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past, Unto, unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom mm -hmm. also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high being made so much better than the, than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But Why unto the Son he saith, but unto the Son he saith, Thy mm -hmm. throne, O God, is forever mm -hmm. and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So we see clearly God calling his son God. That's what he said. This is straight out. God calls him God. Let's go to uh, back to John 1, and we're going to read 2 to 3, skip to 10 to 14, and then skip to 29. Okay, my brother, verse 2, read. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him, was not anything made that was made. Skip to verse 10 he and read. The, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as okay, many as there, received... his own that received him not, that was Israel. He came through the nation of Israel, and the vast majority did not receive him. So go ahead, sir, read. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes, sir. The next day. So we see and understand, hold it there. Why was he in the world? Skip to verse 29 and read. This God who became flesh, why was he in the world? Read, my brother. Skip to 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And that's absolutely correct because man sinned and sin is a transgression of the law. We can read that in 1 John uh, 3 and verse 4. And the wages of sin is death. Therefore, man needed a savior to salvage him from this death sentence. So let's go to Isaiah 12 and read verse 2. When you get there, please read. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song he also has become my salvation so we need to find out when did jehovah become salvation so let's go to john 5 and we're going to read 37 
then skip to 39 to 40, skip to 43, then back up to 22 and read to 24. Okay, sir. Verse 5, please. Uh, verse 37, please read. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Yes, sir. That's what he said. The Father himself had sent me. So this is Jehovah coming as the Father has sent him. So skip down to verse 39 and read. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you Hold will not come So Jesus is saying, is telling us, telling his people in front of him at that time, search the scriptures which are from Genesis to Malachi, which people call the Old Testament. And this is what causes a lot of confusion for a lot of people because the ministers have told them they are New Testament Christians, so they don't read the whole book. So they don't have no understanding. Go ahead, sir, read. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. Yes, sir, skip to uh, 43 and read. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. And that name he came in his Father's name is Jesus. So let us back up to verse 22 and read. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which have sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And here the Lord spells out the term. If we do not believe who he is, we go stand before him as a judge. Let's go to uh, Acts 3 and we're going to read 19 to 23. Go ahead, sir. Read. Repent, repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you, of your, of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which shall which will not hear the pro that prophet shall be excuse me shall be destroyed from among the people. So here we are told, even to this day, people are still kicking at Jesus Christ. But he himself even told us as it is prophesied concerning him in the sound. Behold, I come in the volume of the book. That's why he was telling these people from way back there that they search the scriptures because they testify of me, but they wouldn't believe. So here we are told again, if we do not believe, if we do not listen to the son, we will meet him as the judge. So now let us go and see who will be heading up the father's kingdom when it is established upon the earth after the millennium reign of Christ. Let's go to Revelation 21, and we're going to read 1 to 2, and then skip to 22 to 23. Go ahead. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I saw yes, no sir, temple therein. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb there and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Yes, sir. So as we look at this, this is after the millennium reign of Christ. 
And we can see uh, there is only two persons. If the Holy Ghost was God, where is he? Where is that third person? Let us further cement this. Let's go to Revelation 22, and we're going to read one, and then we're going to skip to verse 3. Okay, my brother, please read. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. So we read there, and he showed me in verse 1, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal. And what is clear as crystal to us, my brothers and sisters, from the word of God, is that there is only two in the God family. From the beginning to the end, that is what we see, my brothers and my sisters. We hope people will look at this. We know the strongholds which get set up in people's minds when they don't read for themselves. They just stand there and listen to a minister because he's got some great title of reverend doctor, reverend professor. But then you have people like us who are called plain old brother Alvin, brother Jedediah, and brother Mark. Who are they that we should listen to them? I'll tell you who. We put the word of God up on the table and we read the word of God for you to see with your own eyes and you can make your own conclusion. And you will see and understand that you have been misled. And we hope that light will come on and you will see the, see the truth here and come to know the true and living God and serve him for yourself. And with that, I hand back to the partner. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Amen. in Jesus' name. Because it, uh -huh. it is very important that we uh to these scriptures, like Brother Mark was saying. We're trying to warn the people, <clears throat> let the people know that what you have been getting has been traditional ideology and falsehood, and you can't read it in the Bible. I like how you pointed out how Paul was dealing with uh Savannah's and Timotheus in the church of Thessalonians and how he greeted them and, and bidded them grace and peace be unto you uh, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ along with Philly man he just saw him too you know he said and how he greeted you know Alpha and, and the fellow soldiers that labor with him down there he said grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ even brother Peter why is they only acknowledging two? He 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 acknowledged the same two: Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith, the same faith that we have with us through the righteousness of God the Father and our Savior Jesus Christ, like you pointed out yes, in the last book of the Bible, in Revelation. Yes. You can't go no further than that. In 22 and 21, it said there was no temple in this kingdom right here. But the temple thereof is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, Jesus the Christ and the Father, still too. 23, and the city didn't have no need of the sun or the moon because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb is the light thereof. Even when you took yes, it to the last chapter of this last book, you can't go no further than that. It was two thrones and water of life was coming off and under the thrones and it was the throne of the almighty God, the father himself and the throne of the only begotten of the father. But at that time, it would be many that would be identified as God. And it was them two, them two. We cannot find this third individual because it's not in the Bible and Trinity, there is no such creature only a figment of your imagination and it's not according to the word of God. That's why Jesus tell us, you err, not knowing the power of God, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And I turn it back over to the panel. Hope somebody was edified. Great understanding, great scriptures you put forth, Brother Mark Adraria. And thank you. Thank you, my brother. Amen, so amen, amen, brother. Uh... You just almost did another sermon right there, my brother. But I appreciate, brother, everything that you've done, man. And of course, I mean, I love the way uh, that you testify of the Father and Son. 
I mean, because Jesus tells us, and this is, and it seems the people seem to be missing this. Uh, he tells us in John 14 and 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto me uh, but by the Father. I mean, it's him and the Father, and that's the way, you know, you you reach, you know, salvation. Not, not through the Holy Ghost, right? Uh, just as, you know, we all brought out in Philippians 2, uh, there's no other name above the name of Jesus. And the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. And, and the Holy Ghost is not a name. It's a title. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, in the military, they would say, you know, it's his nomenclature, which is his design of duty. And his duty is as a servant and not as a deity. And as uh, you rightly emphasize the father and son, those two which is written uh, like in Acts 4 uh, and 12. It says, neither is there any salvation other. Mm -hmm. um, there's no other name under heaven that, mm -hmm. that's among men. No other name, the name of Jesus, where we must be saved. And, you know, and, and the uh, also says in uh, John 10 and 9, there's, you know, I am the door. By me, if any man enter, he shall be saved and he shall go in and out and find pleasure. But Jesus is the door. Yes, sir. He's the door to the yes, Father. Sir. You can't you can't get to the Father except through him. That is and right. The Holy Spirit is the su the supportive uh the, the Holy Spirit is, is the supportive mechanism for them. So I, you know, these brothers and sisters that that's on this tangent, brother, you know, all you can do is just pray that the Lord have mercy on them. But, and they pick up that book and see that only through uh, the Lord Christ Jesus, man, can we receive uh, uh, and, and, and uh, be redeemed for, you know, all of our misgivings, you know, in this life. But, you know, the uh, only thing you can do is just pray that the Lord opens their eyes. But I thank you, for, uh, uh, brother Mark for uh, opening up uh, somebody's eyes because the scriptures do not lie and you put it down exactly as they should have been put down. So I thank you and I turn it back over to the panel. Amen. Praise the yes, Lord. sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, thanks brothers and sisters that uh, viewed the show and we, we pray that you get some ratification and come back and, and deal with us and view more subjects and titles so you can learn about what, what what's in the Holy Scripture and not what we have on our, on our mind. That's why we read. And like the brother pointed out, Jehovah has become our salvation. And that one which is known as Jehovah has become Jesus now, given the name above every name through his father. Yes, we want to thank brother Michael Pippins for the great reading. We want to thank brother Jedediah for your segment and the, what the Lord put on your heart. We want to thank you, brother Mark. We want to thank brother Rashan for dealing with the technical support in the background and bringing this show together by the hand and power of the Lord. Bless the Lord God of Israel because we can't fail yes, with him. Like always, fear God, keep his, keep his commandment. That's the whole duty of man. And if you can't read it, don't believe it. Don't the believe Godhead. it. Amen. Peace. In Jesus' name. Peace, 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 peace. Amen. From leaning not on our own understanding to casting down wicked imaginations, we're here to study to show ourselves approved here a little and there a little. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Stick to the Script. Let's read the Bible now.